Well, there's a familiar view. So many of you are probably familiar with um, from your childhoods, from your parents driving you to the ends of roads on the coast and sitting and watching the windscreen wipers going to and fro, which thankfully they're not doing today. But anyway, I am at Dunnet Head, which is the most northerly point on the British mainland. And I, it's quite nostalgic, actually. I've never actually been here before, but the feeling's very uh, vivid of sitting in a car, the engine, going, engine being turned off, it all going quiet, and the wind howling outside, and you can feel the car shaking. <laughs> It's being buffeted. This is my fair weather alternative for the day. I, um, I'm up in Sutherland, um, although this is Caithness, but I'm staying in Sutherland in, uh, in Kimbrace, and I wanted to do some of the smaller hills over there, but uh, there's 100 mile an hour winds forecast for tomorrow, the day after, and then 85 mile an hour winds forecast for the day after that. So hills are strictly off bounds for the next three days, um, so I thought that cliffs, coastline, lighthouses, enormous great big breakers on the beach, big waves coming in. That's the, that's the, uh, the bad weather alternative for Scotland in a storm. <laughs> that brings back memories too of opening a door in places like this and it just flinging out and almost being broken off on its hinges as the wind catches it. shelter. There's um, remains of crustaceans everywhere. There's just remains of crabs and all sorts scattered everywhere here. I'm not good with um, marine birds really, so I don't really know what we'd be doing now, whether it's gulls or, or whatever. And the cliffs that the lighthouse sits on are undeniably impressive, They're just quite, quite precipitous. It has a real end of the world feel to it, just as you expect and just as you'd want from one of the most, one of the extremities of our island, especially on the north. Southwest, and because this is north facing, I'm guessing it's not, it's a bit protected, but the swell of the sea is still quite incredible. I didn't actually notice then, there was a RAF tornado did a fly pass right in view and I didn't even notice. <laughs> anyway, somewhere I've always wanted to come, so in a, in a way I'm, while I was gutted that there was bad weather forecast for the hills, um, I probably wouldn't have come here otherwise actually, I'd have been up in the hills, so now that there's actually a storm blowing in, this is giving me a chance to come somewhere like this. Oh. RAF doing their thing. The RAF do seem to have a thing about these uh, these extremities of the country. There's uh, they're flying around here, and then if you go up to the northwest of Cape Wrath, they uh, you can actually see them bombing, actually dro actually dropping bombs on rock stacks out to sea.
place. I'm just walking along the tops of these cliffs and after every sort of rise you come to another staggering view like this one. We're so lucky in this country to have well, to be an island, I suppose, but we're lucky to have dramatic scenery, coastal scenery, cliffs. Isn't that funny? Imagine this whole section will fall away one day. shelter. Place for sandwiches. How funny. Must be the only shelter for miles. So still and calm down here. And yet, as soon as you emerge back out of this trench, Harsh North Coast. better to get out of the wind. Um, that up there where I just was with all those uh, viewfinder things and maps is um, just the high point of Dunnet Head when you can see all the way over to Orkney, Scapa Flow which is over there, all the way over to the east is uh, Duncan's Bee Head on a good day which is uh, up by John O'Groats and as you can see from the map in the other way you can see Cape Wrath on a good day. All these famous names you know you can just, just roll off the tongue Cape Wrath, Old Man of Hoy, John O'Groats, Scarpa Flow they can all be seen up here on a good day. Uh, I can actually see the Old Man of Hoy sticking up over there above Orkney. All these buildings were um, from the Second World War I think it's said uh, obviously with views expansive views in every direction uh, this was an important place for servicemen who were stationed here to look out for Submarines probably, or all that kind of thing. I can just see through here. Just imagine people stationed up here during the war. Oops. Well, that's a couple of houses up here. Looks occupied. Must be an old keeper's cottage or something, or some part of the, the lighthouse complex. But what a place to live with. God, I bet they see some weather there. <laughs> you can see how uh, how they built it quite shout out. It's quite low, isn't it? It's not a high building at all, just to escape the worst of the wind. But, uh, I quite fancy sort of being up here in one of those houses during a, a really violent storm. It must be unreal. Although I know in the, the garden they've got, there's not really anything growing of any height. See the rubbish bins are well and truly tied down with chains. A strong wind, I'm sure they could end up in Norway. Just shoves me behind the car now that I'm back. Just to say that, uh, just reading up on the lighthouse, it was built in 1831. Isn't that rem it's remarkable? It's you know, getting on for 200 years nearly, 180 years. Uh, and it was built by a, a Stevenson, I forget the, his Christian name, but he was grandfather of Robert Louis Stevenson that uh, wrote Treasure Island. Talk about keeping it in the family, God, there's some talent for you.